Hello and welcome to um, the BASWA webinar. My name's Kerry O'Reardon, I'm a professional officer for BASWA. Uh, today's webinar is the roles and tasks of child and family social workers and we're joined by June Thorburn who's been working with BASWA for over 40 years and she's won the Social Work of the Year Award Outstanding Contribution to Social Work and she's also published and um, written a book Collaborative Practice with Vulnerable Children and Their Families. So she's a very large breadth of experience in the industry and she's also got a vested interest in this work. So I'm going to hopefully most of you received the download um, copy of June's paper that she wrote and we're going to go to June now who's going to go through her paper and then we're going to open up to comments from people who are attending the webinar. We've got about 31 members so we're hoping to have a good discussion following June's talk. So if we're ready if you're ready, June. Yep, yep. And just, uh, I'm amazed that so many people are here in the middle of August and uh, holiday season and kids out of school and all the rest of it. So uh, welcome, everybody. Um, as Kerry said, I, I have been uh, a member of Basra for 40 odd years. Uh, I was original, one of these original odd balls called a child care officer. Um, <laughs> and um, have been involved on the policy end, uh, helping Basel with policy papers uh, off and on, as I, uh, like all of you, probably picked up this and did a bit of that and got back to where I, what I was interested in and pitted the kids in in, in between. Um, so where does this come from? Well, first of all, uh, I am a part, a member of the BPEG, I hate the name, but it's a, it's a buzzword, Children and Families Policy and Carrier Family, what else it means, policy and policy. something or other, and policy, practice and education yes. group. Uh, and essentially we are a group of people who are specialists in child and family work from across the field. Um, and we act as advisors, we help the Basra staff to put together um, responses to consultations, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and one of the things we talked about was that, that it's actually quite difficult when you're trying to uh, respond to uh, people who say, well, what does this mean? Or why does Basra do this? Or why did this awful social worker do this, that or the other? Um, to have something, particularly for the communications people and for the media people and the parliamentary officer, uh, to say, well, this is this is what social workers do. Um, so uh, I put together a draft of this, from very much based on my own experience as a social work lecturer. Um, and I hope you'll all read it. And I guess you won't all have read it, but this will give you something to maybe uh, persuade you to read it and, and think about the ways that Basra can use it. Um, there will be a few changes to be made. It, it was a, the, the, It's still a bit of a draft that, that is on the website. So if anybody thinks that we've got something terribly wrong, I don't think we're in the business of changing it substantially, uh, but there is an, an opportunity uh, after tonight to do a little bit of tinkering possibly. Um, so why did we do this? Uh, well, essentially because too many people think that a, a social worker or and indeed a child and family social worker is a local authority child protection worker. Um, whereas uh, we know, you know, we knew that there are all sorts of other roles and we wanted to set the uh, set the record straight for the people out there as to the, the vast areas of practice that child and family social workers are involved in. So that's where it came from. Um, who is it for? Well, lots of people. It's, it's not in a way for you people who are tuning in probably, uh, although uh, hopefully it will stimulate discussion amongst the uh, experienced practitioners, child and family practitioners. Um, it might uh, be useful for people in other specialisms, in elder care or adult care or uh, uh, all sorts of specialisms, just if you like to refresh their memories from the 
dim and distant days for some of them when they were did did a generic training. Uh, so it could be useful for them. Uh, and of course, adult social workers, particularly people who work with parents with disabilities, do need to refresh, be, be very uh, at speed, up to speed with what child and family social workers are doing. Um, it certainly could be for beginning social workers, be it students start of their courses, thinking which option shall I follow. Um, uh, so that's amongst the uh, social workers um, that, who can find it useful. Um, it, it could also be very useful for our international colleagues. Uh, again, uh, we I'm, I'm written a lot about international social work and cross cross national child and family work. Uh, and this word child protection is very confusing because if you're a Scandinavian, the term for child and family social work is child protection. So uh, when we explain that actually child and family child protection is only a part of child and family social work, um, uh, then they find that a little odd. So again, explaining that what they call child protection work, we would call child and family social work or child welfare work or a much broader concept. So international colleagues, it, it could be quite handy for. Um, it's uh, but but also very useful, and this is where my my book comes in. I'm going I'm going to flash a picture of it. How about that? Um, uh, because it's it's really very useful for uh, professional colleagues in the other other professions. I I'm deeply believer in team around the family based practice, um, and. Uh, we need to know about other professions, they need to know about us. And hopefully uh, this will be something that you could give to your team around the family colleagues who say, what, what on earth do social workers do? Um, uh, well, and I then, say, of course... Sorry, yeah, go on. can I just say at this point, because we've got about 40 people attend, in attendance at the moment, so we've got plenty of time for comments afterwards, um, and we welcome feedback. For, so, if anyone's joined us online, if you type your questions and comments as they come to you in the questions drop down, and then after you finish speaking, June, we can come to them at the end. But it just means that um, we want to encourage people to, to, you know, get in touch. As think, well. think of them talking as well. Yeah. And, and also, um, it, it, I'd rather have comments and questions in a way. I mean, questions if you've got them, but uh, comments particularly. Um, so who else is it for? And, and of course, it is for parents and children uh, and their carers, foster carers, adopters, um, uh, you know, who we, we need to explain the, the range of things that we do. Again, uh, as we know, many parents, sadly, think social workers are the enemy. Uh, but I was talking, interestingly enough, to plumber who's refitting my, um, my, my boiler today. If I look a bit red, that's why he had the heat on, on full blast. Um, and he said, oh, what do you do? And I explained. And he said, oh, we had a lovely social worker. And he was a doctor. Uh, you know, so the, the image that um, some families who struggle to look after their children do sadly see us as the uh, ogres who might remove their children rather than the people who have enormous powers uh, to help and support them. Um, so it, it is for parents, children, carers. It is uh, for the media, and indeed it was the media that we originally um, thought it would be useful for, and it's for politicians, national, local councillors, um, and, um, and indeed hopefully local Basra groups will use it with their local politicians and their local councillors. So that's um, uh, a quick, uh, who is it looking at the time? Uh, who is it for? That in a way is, is the main part of what I wanted to say because uh, uh, it, it, um, uh, otherwise you might read it thinking, oh, well, no, that we need a bit more detail here and a bit more detail there. We were trying to get the essence. And as Kerry was saying, it's only five sides. Uh, and we, we wanted to get the essence 
and the range. So then there's a whole, uh, I'm going through the sections now, there's a section on context. Um, essentially, it, it's a descriptive, it's not really an analytic paper. Uh, it may be, I, I, I think it, it shouldn't be particularly controversial, but some people might find it controversial and okay, that's all to the good, let's have a bit of debate. Um, uh, but it isn't particularly contentious. It, it, it sets out to describe, the, to, 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 uh, first of all, the context. So if I go through the headings, um, the, the, the context, this is why I have to move over. Uh, so the, the contextual bit was who are uh, the children and families uh, that children and family social workers work with. And again, it covers the whole range, the age range, including young people who've left care up to the age of 25 and infants. And again, a lot of people out there think we're all about babies and little children. Um, and, and it's very important to, to cover the range of, of the children and families and the sorts of problems they might encounter. Um, so, the, the next section is, um, um, well, that's right. So the next section is um, what, what do they actually do? That again is, is contact context um, in different settings. And then uh, the, the overarching, and I really wanted to get this in, the overarching uh, centrality of relationship-based helping. Um, so um, I've already, already lost myself here. So first of all, it talks about who are the children and the sorts of problems that children and families might encounter, um, and in, uh, uh, that, that provide it's not always with, with problems because, of course, they do assess whether uh, foster carers or adopters should uh, be able to to take children or. Um, uh, indeed, at senior levels, uh, whether uh, people should be taken on as social workers. It's a, a whole range. And I think it, uh, the paper tries to look at the PCF, really. It's thinking about the whole range and the whole career uh, cycle of child and family social workers from beginning, so, you know, beginning students all the way through to directors of children's services, uh, professors of social work. Uh, the, the next little contextual bit is um the work settings where, where do they do the work they do uh and again whilst the majority of them do work in for local authorities uh some work in the voluntary sector some work uh, in um private agencies some work as sole contractors more and more uh, some of you tuning in will be will will be doing that you 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 offer to uh, provide one-off services like assessment of foster carers or uh, whatever it might be so that again looks at the context uh, the employment and the work settings of, 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 and and uh, and then um uh, then the next contextual bit is who funds who pays for all these child and family social workers. We are pretty unusual. Uh, we're not unusual in Europe, but we're pretty, un we, we certainly are very different from the USA, where the majority of MSWs are actually private contractors uh, contracting uh, with um, individual clients to provide them with, with the service, which is why you hear a lot in the States about clinical practice. And you hear very little, you don't hear the term clinical practice so much in, in England, although one or two, uh, or one or two more than that, but a small number of people, social workers will move into specialisms as clinicians. Um, but generally speaking, the people who receive our services are, um, the services are paid for by the pub, out of the public purse, even though uh, the public purse might go from central government to local authority to a private contractor or a private fostering agency. But the money, uh, at some point or initially, comes from uh, uh, the taxpayer. So that looks at who who provides and who pays. Um, 
Uh, and then finally, in this contextual thing, uh, the networks, the community networks of child and family social workers, who do they work with? Uh, I'm particularly mentioning uh, neighbourhood based social work. I was a great fan, some of you might know, of Bob Holman, who died a couple of years ago, but his community social work, which is not the same as community work, but there is still a model of neighbourhood based social workers. Some area teams are very much, some local authorities, so town family social work teams are based on neighbourhoods and uh, in my day it used to be called patch, um, but the, where you, you have a, a sense of uh, commitment to your community, uh, but also the concept of communities of interest, like you might be a specialist worker with uh, children with disabilities and you might work and be employed by an NGO uh, who, um, with, uh, who specializes in working with children with hearing disabilities or whatever it might be. Um, so that's the, uh, the, the, the network. So those people will very much be working with the community of people who uh, have issues around hearing disabled children or indeed hearing uh, parents with hearing loss. So then, so that's, that's, there's a lot about context because I think that's often the most misunderstood uh, part of, of who we are. Uh, then we go on to the second major bit, which is roles and tasks. Uh, what do they actually do? Um, and I refer there to the, uh, I, I say, I, I did the draft, but it's gone through Basra's processes and the, the, the PPEG have all had a careful look at it and, and signed it off. Um, uh, but um, the, the, as I've just said earlier, that we, we looked at the whole range of um, the PCF from beginning social workers right through to uh, director of children services. Um, and I, I won't go through that. I, what, what, the, the way we did that was to have a sort of broad outline, which if you can see the, the document, it has bullet points. And then in italics, a little bit more explanation. Uh, again, it's a pretty tall order to encompass all of what I've just talked about in five pages. Um, and um, I'm sure some of you will think that I've over-prioritized some areas and not others. But that's an attempt So basically use their knowledge and skills to work ethically, collaboratively and creatively with community members. So you start with the, the role, sure start workers, but, uh, child and family workers working in sure, sure start local settings are, are much involved in, in community work. Uh, and then uh, narrowing down, providing advice. The so Children Act 1989 was very insistent that one of the roles was to make sure that members of the community had uh, had sources of advice, particularly about uh, under Section 17 as to where they can can, can go for help. Uh, then uh, we've got uh, moving towards the in need end of uh, things, which is where most child and family social workers work. Uh, going all the way through to uh, uh, assessing adopted child protection assessments um, and uh, helping. I'm not, again, I, I have a bit of a thing. I've, I've got several things. I hope, I'm sure you all have things. I don't like the word intervention. I much prefer helping uh, because intervention seems a very, a very technical short term, you dash in, you intervene, and you get out, whereas uh, that might be some of the work that child and family social workers do, but quite others are involved over very long periods. If you think of having a, a, a young person in care and you, you happily you see on Twitter some of the people who say, well, I saw my social worker last week. Well, she was my social worker 20 years ago. <laughs> so. Uh, there is there is long term work as well as uh, short term work, so I prefer the overarching concept of helping, uh, which um, in includes intervening and using particular methods. So then we move on to um, the essential components uh, I've thought of um, relationship based helping, um, and uh, again I'll. I'll possibly su summarize that, but again, 
the essential component component of relationship-based social work with children, their families, and their carers, which will be drawn on differently depending on the role and the setting. So role and setting is really important when you're trying to understand what you do. So on the one hand, you've got community enabled social work and their, their tools will be, uh, the tools they're mainly using will be quite different from at the other end of the scale. Uh, people who are co coordinating and working collaboratively, collaboratively in teams around a child and family who will be children in need or children looked after or children in need of protection plans. And, and sometimes um, people will be, become very specialist and they might well work in the, in, in the for instance, the TAVI, uh, adoption, therapeutic adoption team, where the, the skills that people will be using will be highly specialist and very similar to the sort of clinical skills of the psychiatrists, the psychologists that they're working with. So um, one is trying to cover the whole range. So I think I'll shut up there really. Um, and, and I'll be very interested to as I say, it's, it, it, it's hard enough to do it in five pages, but doing it in half an hour is even more difficult. So hopefully it's whetted your appetite and you're going to read it um, and make whatever use of it you can. I'm sure Baz will be very interested to know how you're using it. Definitely. That's me done. Thank you so much, June. Um, five minutes. Yeah, you did really well. I'd like to take this opportunity just to ask people who are, have attended. We want to make this an interactive experience and we want to get as many people who are um, tuned in online to give their feedback to um, June's paper. It, it, uh, we're a member-led organisation, so it's very important for us to hear what our members have to say and what we're doing. It makes our work richer. Um, one of the comments we've had is that I'm glad to see a discussion about a range of social work roles, particularly those not in the local authority and statutory sector. I spent 15 years doing direct work with children and families in a voluntary agency. Um, so I think that this, your, what you're writing about, what you're speaking about, is that there are a lot of roles beyond child protection. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't... Let's let's have several comments because I, you know, I I, I can say yes, I totally agree, um, but that's a, a waste of everybody's time, really. <laughs> well, I no, that that is precisely why. And of course, the PPEG members are, are. I mean, maybe just a little bit about the PPEG. We there's a small group of us who can actually make it as far as Birmingham four times a year, uh, Birmingham to London to. Um, but actually, we're very conscious that those of you who are in full time jobs can't do that. So other people chip in over the web uh, and therefore we, we do have uh, amongst a sort of group of around 20 people, quite a broad range, including people who were making precisely that point, really. Yes. And we've got um, someone who's just qualified. And they're talking and they're talking about how they'll be going into local authority. And I think actually we speak to a lot of students and that does seem to be most students do tend to go into child, child protection straight after qualifying. I think that's one of the, the mantras you're sort of told, isn't it? That, you know, you have to get your child protection experience under your belt, two years child protection. I know that's what I was thinking. I would really challenge that, I, I, I think. Uh, and of course, there are, I think, Bree Featherstone's work, and she's she's been much involved with the, with the PPEG. Um, there are different ways of organising the delivery of child and family social work, even at the at the heavier end, um, which allow a way in to do child and family social work, including a cross of uh, children in need and children in need of protection, um, and and I'm thinking of Leeds is, an, is one of the authorities who have a very interesting way of uh, thinking about the way they deliver the role. So I, I would advise people not to go into something called child protection, um, but to go into something called child and family social work, um, 
which uh, preferably which would be neighborhood based rather than functional based but that's a, one of one of the bees in my particular bonnet as i say we tried to be pretty neutral in in the way we we wrote this piece to, to, to not get into that sort of debate no i think that's really important because that's something i always try and communicate in like you there's more there's more than child protection social work there's a wide range of roles and um, one of the questions we've got from the room is um how can the wide range of roles in children's social work become better known and appreciated by the public uh, that's why we that's why we wrote the the piece really um uh and it really is is quite difficult um because the media do uh, the media on the whole are not interested in uh what we do day in day out they want the drama don't they and and um uh again they want they tend to want the extremes they they want two points of view one uh, as an example i my my area of practice is is a, a writing is adoption and i've often um a, a adoption race for example the media will want if they want to talk that something happens about the placement of a black child in a white family or something or other and they'll 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 want somebody who says black children should never be placed with white families and somebody else who says color doesn't matter at all uh, you can place children uh, you know wherever you, wherever it's the right thing to do and i would say but you know 90 90 percent plus will be somewhere in the middle of that uh, and the the media would say oh well we, we don't want to talk to you there uh, you know, so it is quite difficult to, to to get that message across i think basra branches it's really important for you to use this this document if you if you can and perhaps have local meetings to talk about it with your local councillors yeah i think that's why i i really enjoyed the silent child um, which was that short film about the social worker working with a child with hearing loss. Yeah, I, I've not seen it, but I know of it, but absolutely, yeah. And yeah. that was a really good example of, you know, it's not just someone knocking on the door at nine o'clock at night and being like, can I have your child, please? It was like yeah. showing a nice like relationship within the social work context. We've got um, someone, up, someone speaking about it's, how it's helpful to have the information to share with families. And it's a former child protection social worker who's now retrained studying veterinary medicine, but they're undertaking independent court assessments. And often, oh, I love that. yeah, it's cool, isn't it? And often the families are confused about social work roles and tasks. So this is helpful. So thank oh, you. Cool. I mean, in terms of, I think it's also really good how you've put, in, how you've specifically outlined relationship-based social work, because that's quite an important role for. Um, that's quite an important thing for Basra at the moment with our 8020 campaign. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of where do you feel in, in terms of defining the role of social workers, do you feel that it's it, relationship based practice is taken for granted and that it sort of needs to be brought back to the centre or what's your view um, making that specific point? Mm -hmm. I think it, it is central uh, it, it always has i mean i it, it people keep inventing new terms uh, you know psychosocial casework person in environment um in, uh, throughout social work's history i um, my guru i was trained by somebody called olive stevenson who was writing about um i mean what what she wrote still is is absolutely central now um i think it's too easy to uh, to, to to think about technician I, I don't see a social worker as a technician um and i think we've got to be very careful that even though people learn techniques uh new methods whether it's mst or um signs of safety or motivational interviewing or whatever it is those come on top of relationship based helping basically um packages of care um so so i i think um no i i i, I don't think relationship based helping has gone away 
and I don't know any social workers who underneath whatever whatever technique they're using aren't basically thinking about the relationship even if you're a short-term uh, assessment doing short-term child protection assessments um, relationship you, you you have to think about the relationship even though you might only have two visits uh, to that particular parent or child yes i've got a comment um regarding it's, i'm interested in noting that there is no mention of children's rights and human rights in the paper much of the work that i've done over 30 plus years as a practicing social worker has been in the court arena and there is a concept of advocating for children's rights is very fundamental to what social workers do mm -hmm. that's a good point but we need to adjust it on that uh, we we certainly say that one of the roles is court based social work um uh, and and um uh, that that's in there but perhaps we could but it's not just court based social work but it's it may be the rights I'll, I'll have a look at it again it may be uh, i'd be interested if the person has who's made the comment has read through the the um the document uh, because if we if if we don't mention rights uh, that's a mistake and and we we need to look at that basically but it, it's it's parents rights children's rights uh neighborhood social work is about ensuring uh that people know what their rights to services are advocacy we certainly mention advocacy um so, but yeah I'll, I'll have a look at that again because it's a, a crucial point i always think it's important to mention that we don't we also don't have the power to and i know this is going back to child protection but i that we don't have the power to remove children that that's a court or that's a court order or a police power and i think sometimes telling people like i find like i often have to tell people that um so anyway so if we go one of the um, in a way that's that that's getting more into detail yeah. than than, than we could but again it's a fair point um it, it's it, it, yeah it's working it's emphasizing that we work collaboratively i guess yeah i think that's i think that's it but um oh. but i just it's always it's always something that i think it, it's again it's that sharp end that's what people want to know about yeah um, yeah yeah so the lady who's currently a social worker and training to be a vet has said that she would like to be a vet but still retain her social work training values, etc. Child protection is an amazing field, but social work is a broad field. It's fascinating. I, I've known people who were vets who've gone into social work, and I've known people who were lawyers move into social work, and people who were social workers move into the law. I think that's very good, actually. That then that you, I think, if you have been a social worker, you never lose that. But it's 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 it it um it resonates with the fact that it's such a broad field that it attracts such a wide range of people mm, mm. Um, oh, absolutely so we've also got uh i find that social work is very much dominated oh, sorry i'm just trying to get down to the next question um i find that social work is very much dominated by child protection cases and that's karen she's qualified in 2008 local authority social work sorry yeah no that it's true and it, part of this is to and 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 i think i think there are i'm not sure that it is if you look at all the social workers in practice there are an awful lot of people in adoption and fostering uh in working uh as i say with uh, deaf children or parents who uh, have disabilities or in addiction and uh, these may well be child and you know if you're working with parents with an addiction uh, you, you if you if you don't call yourself a child and family social work you, uh, you, you are my way of thinking um, so I, 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 I think in in the eyes of the media I think that's the case and I think it's a real problem at the moment and we know it because uh, because of the cuts um, uh, Family, family social, uh, preventive family social work has been 
ease out of the reckoning, which is why I, I'm an admirer of places like Leeds and Hertfordshire and various places who, who are trying to make sure that early help um, is, is, is a key part of, of what they're delivering. I mean, yeah. I'd like to see, see social workers. I mean, if, if social work is about, is about relationship, we shouldn't have a model of delivery where families keep changing their social workers, which is why I'm all for neighborhood based social work. And I think, like, in terms of funding, that was brought up in the care crisis review and some um, local government, the some LGA reports that, you know, funding has gone down. And I think what we're seeing is families are finding it harder and harder to get over the threshold. And when yeah. they are... And, and therefore, it's harder and harder for people to get jobs uh, which allow them to combine... Um, care and control, if you like, uh, doing, you know, helping and um, saying it like it is. And um, uh, uh, the beginning social workers in particular should be doing both. Yeah, I've got another um, question. I've got another comment. Um, I'm an AYSE, I'm an ASYE and in a disability department in a local authority and I've experienced everything from giving information um, straight through to court and adoption. I love it and the scope of specialist practice. That's, that's really good to hear. That's my experience too. And if, if when I had students on placement, I was always delighted when they went into disability teams exactly for that reason. Um, uh, and the same applies to adults with disabilities. You know, child and family social workers, uh, uh, there's a lot of role for them in in adult in adult teams. And um, I was going into an academy with a. I will be going into an academy with a protective caseload, and I'll have a chance to work in all teams. Oh, that's amazing! So that must be. An, what, I, oh, I yeah, that must be an, a newly qualified social. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this word a lot of local authorities now have academies for their beginning social workers, don't they? Yeah, and a chance to work. So that's, that's um, a bit more like health, isn't it? Where they sort of rotate through specialisms. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, I'm not sure that, I wasn't sure whether academy as in academy school or academy as in uh, a really uh, um, a, a, term, a term for uh, local authority practice for ASYE maybe students. If, students. Uh, maybe if you could, I think it might be the second, but if, if you'd like to clarify, um, I won't share names. Um, I think I've, it, like just in terms of a scope of practice, I think some of the best social workers I've known have come from a background in mental health, in drug and alcohol, because you're not just working with children, you're working with families and often yes. parents yes. have got needs that you need to understand. Another question is child protection is not always about being functional. It is a fun and challenging role. That is true. Um, it, um. Yeah, but provided that it, 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 this is back to if we were in Sweden, they would say, of course, because child protection means the whole of child welfare. I mean, it depends how you define uh, child protection. But it's certainly true that some people prefer that short term uh, assessment, um, uh, quick piece of um, quick, but very skilled piece of work and then move on. So shorter term relationships and other people prefer um, to work on a longer term basis. I mean, there, there, there needs to be, there is scope for both actually. Um, and I think also as well that like, we don't talk about the fact that we do talk about how challenging it is, we do talk about difficulties, we don't talk about how rewarding some of, rewarding and sort of fun and some of the, you know, the lighter parts of even child protection social work can be you know, you can have, you know, good relationships with parents, you can, and I think some, and I don't, and I think I'm glad, and, I, and some parts are darker and more difficult to manage, but I do think it's 
it's it we it, it is nice that someone has said you know that there are good parts even to child protection oh uh, absolutely i mean otherwise why would you why would you do it but there are more um you know the the ultimate aim again there's this uh, social workers have huge discretion as to whether to call a particular case especially neglect a child a child in need case or a child protection case mm. uh in other words whether to go down the uh the uh, formal child protection conference route or whether to take it down the uh, child in need route. I mean, the, the beauty of the role is is there is huge amount of discretion actually, particularly around neglect. There isn't if you're talking about broken bones, but if you're if you're talking about the majority of cases which are um, families just not coping at times of crisis, um, one social worker will take that down the the child in need route, and another one down the formal child protection conference route. Yeah, but, and I, yeah, that can be problematic though as well, especially when you've got a high turnover. You can end up with families getting inconsistent messages though, can't you? Oh well, it, it depends on it depends on the agency. It depends on the area. If you if you look at, for instance, all these edge of care teams, that is precisely what they're doing. They're they're choosing uh, to work uh, across that that boundary uh, between family support and possibly using short-term residential care or short-term foster care again the, the north yorkshire no no um whatever it is door no wrong door is a is is a very interesting example there are lots of examples where uh, social work teams choose to operate flexibly on a longer term relationship basis one of the one of the unfortunate things of course is is the closure of short starts i think that has been tragic short start family centers children's centers uh, uh because social workers attached to uh, either either working from uh, neighborhood family centers or attached to them uh, are able to flick between the whole range of cases yeah Right, we were having loads of really interesting feedback from um, people who are online. So I'm going to read out two, like three comments. Is that all right with you, June? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so we've got it needs to come from the government as well as the media. There needs to be more cultural awareness. And um, what are your thoughts and views in regards to Ofsted outcomes and the pressures this puts on local authorities? Thoughts on privatisation in local authorities? Lots of adoption agencies are now private. Is this a risk? And our final comment is, hi, I'm an NQSW and has just and I've just accepted a looked after child position. I was fixed on doing child protection social work once I qualified. However, I kept an open mind about the possibilities. I do feel that the piece June has written has said it would be helpful for final year social work students to support their understanding of the opportunities available through the diverse roles. Thanks. Yeah, those are uh, Ofsted. Um, I think it's improving. I, I, I can't honestly pretend it's, it's an area that I'm expert on. One has inevitably to keep an eye on. Um, uh, but I think they are moving more towards a sort of support advisory role rather than you just quickly whipping in and um, telling you what's wrong and telling you you've got a uh, uh whatever grade whether it's um uh failing or outstanding um uh, but but yeah i i think it, i think it is problematic that this body of people in a way who offsted offsted somebody once asked you know i mean who are these people uh who, who checks on them <laughs> an interesting question really um uh they all it's a role for Basra. I mean, Basra should always be keeping a careful eye on Ofsted, as indeed on the uh, children, uh, the children's commissioner, uh, or all of these people who who have these these different roles. Um, uh, Privatisation. Well, 
where do we start? As I say, we did we did try to be neutral in the in the in the paper and said that people who employed social workers uh, were were that some social workers work for the private practice for private practice. I, I think there's a confusion between um, the what what a sole trader. I know a lot about our members will, will come under the sole trader. The the, the social worker who uh, makes a decision. Uh, to become self-employed, uh, probably in a local area, uh, working, uh, if, if you like, sometimes to fill gaps. And I think that's very different from uh, the, the private sector, uh, commissioning out the private sector. If, if you work for a private company, the private company's first duty is to the shareholder. Uh, now, I don't know how that sits with your first duty to your clients um uh, you know that must be that must be tricky uh, for some social workers so no i i think there's far too much of the private sector in child and family social work uh, and i certainly will be very much opposed to it the private sector making a profit out and i've tried not to talk about child protection but the the, the, the private making a profit out of the people who take people's children away seems to me um indecent and obscene and i i hope that as we will keep a very careful eye on on what's happening in in that area but you can't have private adoption agencies at the moment thank goodness um uh, you can have private uh, fostering agencies um but uh, and in in scotland you can't have private fostering agencies um so uh, the the um I, I i think we need to watch this again but at the moment the law says you can't uh, place children for adoption if you are a profit a for profit agency and let's hope that continues to be the case i once heard a care leaver say that he was walking down the road when he was in foster care and he saw a sign and it was like foster 400 pound a week and he said he just felt like mm -hmm. he just felt like a, like a meal ticket he just felt he just felt completely like so, just com like someone had put up an actual price on his head and mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to go back to the questions from the room so will it be possible to access the article if you did receive the email yeah it's it's available on the drop down handouts if you still can't find it you can go onto the resources um, of, on the Basel website, and it was we just looked it up. It was it was posted on the twenty fifth of July, so hopefully you can get it on the handouts. If not, it is on the Basel website under um, in the resources section. Um, so if we go through the questions again, so I'm going to do again a, a few questions at a time because we I'm really pleased to see a lot of yeah, you great do that yeah okay. So what about social work as educator in different settings? from children's services to universities. So I suppose that's um, sort of social practice educating, I'm assuming. Um, if I've gotten that wrong, please let me know. I've told a family on placement um, who have addictions that I don't have any power to remove their children, only the courts do. And this enabled a more collaborative working relationship and a positive outcome for everyone involved. I mean, I think, yeah, so nice to hear the ASYE comments. My friend who worked in DCT also loved it. Oh, and then we've got a comment back about the it's an ASYE, it was an ASYE social work academy, but we were in a local authority. Yeah, yeah, that, I think they're very good, though, those, you know, it, it's a way of trying to make uh, beginning social workers special, basically. I think, I think that. that yeah i know there's one in norfolk i think there's one in essex I, yeah. um yeah just social workers educator i mean one of the one of the roles of social workers with families of course is educated if you think of parenting programs um you know one one of the uh the, the 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 toolkit if you like being an educator whether it's education about how to stand up for your rights um uh, uh educating parents i always used to carry child poverty action group uh, uh booklets with me 
and I would give them to my families and say, keep this one for a week. You know better than I do what's going to make sense to you. And, and I'll go over it with you when, when you know, on disability rights and the rest of it. So, so there's a lot of educating in what, in what we do. Um, uh, uh, and of course, educating other professionals about what we do. Um, uh, educating other professionals about what the evidence is. We, we social workers should, we have a different model of research um to to the medical model and often in multidisciplinary team around the family work there is a, a dispute about what works you know the medic's view of what works might not be your view of what works so there's education there in everything we do uh, but i do like this model of people moving between uh, the teaching partnerships uh, are, are working on the uh, practitioners uh, being practice educators and then being mentors for uh, first year in employment and moving between university education and, and practice education. I, I think that's great. I, we, we think, I don't think we say not enough about the, we're back to PCF, the education route uh, that some people want to follow. Uh, including, I would argue very strongly, PhD. Uh, you know, if, if 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 social workers want to move into academic work full time, then they need the opportunity to get uh, research competence. And that's as well about bridging the gap between practice and. That's, there is the thing about about the court. Uh, yeah, it's always a tricky one, isn't it? Because yes, the court decides, but frankly the social worker has a huge part in that decision so one has to be honest um, uh, because the social worker writes the report to the court and makes the recommendation so um, yes saying it's not it's not only me uh, who decides but one has to be honest and say I, I you know what I say to the court will be very important yeah and i and i i think that's definitely true i think court work is can be very difficult for a lot of social workers and i it, it's care and control it, it, it all the time you you are if you're doing child and family social work you are combining uh care uh, elements with control elements um, and you have huge power i mean uh, you have huge power to do really good things. If you've got a 16 year old uh, who is on the edge of care, the decision about whether you say this is a child in need and then you have, you acquire an, an or this is a child in need who needs accommodation because they're, they'll be se severely impaired if they don't have accommodation, then you either award or deprive that teenager of huge amounts of money. Uh, because if you accommodate them, uh, you will uh, be uh, helping them out until they're 25. And if you say, no, push off, go and sort it out with your mum and dad, you are depriving them of huge amounts of money. Yes. You know, we have huge powers. To, this decision about this is or is not a child in need. Uh, being a child in need is, is, uh, gives families the right to a large range of services which if you say this isn't a child in need you deprive them of yeah um we've just had some i've just some more points because i'm just i'm worried making sure that we everyone gets yeah, time is jumping on isn't it yeah. uh this is um such an interesting and recent chat really rewarding um relationship working is key to social work practice as social workers we need to have more experience of direct working with children and families um, before practice, I worked, I worked as an early help key worker for six years before becoming a social worker. Um, mm -hmm. While theory is important, I have real skills and um, it's even more key to being able to support families in a positive and practical manner. Can I just say that um, we did signs of safety in the borough that I worked in and we used to have to write these danger statements for families that were like, why we're worried. And we had to write them in really clear language 
and the early like the um the children and family workers from the sure start centers and the play ther uh, the play workers always wrote the best danger statements because they were so skilled mm. at with families. Mm. please can we have yeah so i just wanted to say that because i think um it's yeah, yeah i agree yeah um please can we have more webinars um agree with the comments we sure start um, and I've been fortunate to have spent the last three years in a local authority support and safeguarding team working from assessment through to adoption. Oh, wow. I built long term relationships with some families and wholly support the need to build relationships in social work. I'm now a specialist assessment team writing parenting assessments. Although this work is shorter term, I still believe in the power of building relationships to support families. So a lot of questions are relationship based. So that sounds like a, a stunning agency. Do you want to do a commercial there? Yeah. I mean, uh, having that opportunity. I mean, more and more agencies are are thinking about how to have this continuity of relationship with the team, even if it's not always. Of course, social workers move, but families can make a relationship with a team. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, although that gets that gets difficult with um, hot desking and all the rest of it. I just wanted to say uh, what we say about what social workers do. They also write reports. You know, reports are very important. Um, and uh, I don't think we can and should be thinking about a time when any any other than a minority of social workers spend all their time working directly with children. Some will, uh, perhaps in specialist settings. But writing that report uh, is absolutely crucial. And sharing that report with the family when you've written it um, uh, let's we we it, it it's the useless um bureaucratic stuff that i worry about um time to talk with other professionals is also very important and i agree and i think one of the things that i think when we're writing reports is that actually you know sometimes when we're talking to families a lot's going on and they can't really appreciate what we're saying but a well written report that's clear and you know straight to the point that they can take away and you know maybe take to a friend to read and discuss actually i think some i think some everything sometimes when you're busy you just assume no one's reading them but they can be really powerful and they can help build a relationship as well because you know if you if you write your concerns clearly in a way that someone can understand then they could be like oh fair enough but if they think that you're just being punitive I think I think the other thing I'd say about about the balance of time it is about balance uh, you need time to discuss and to reflect and frankly to read research I'm a researcher uh, and it worries me that people have it, uh, there, there there are too much too many gobbits of research going around you know quick summaries of uh, which, which are very useful um, you know what do you need to know about 15 useful facts about arranging contact with children, for instance, or children in care. But um, when it's your actual case and it's quite complex, you have to go away and read the actual research and agencies need to give you time to do that. Yeah, that feeds back into our 8020 campaign very nicely, Jude. Um, so we want to talk about there is uh, Still the feeling from professionals that social workers are the leads, very hard to educate them. Yes. Um, and I would add as well that sometimes I feel like professionals look to social workers to change the family as well, ma using magic. Um, social workers need to own their assessments. Sometimes your assessment is that removal is the best option at the time. Um, and again, about care and control. I haven't been practicing due to uh, relocation of different countries in the last five years how can I ensure that I'm re-equipped to going back into um, social work I would say quickly on that point and then I, I'll let June speak is that um, we have a webinar on registration with the HCPC early October so all of our events are online but it's to that particular Great. question we've got an answer and that's really important for for people coming back into the profession after time out or uh, after time overseas yeah and, and basil has got a key role there yeah definitely so the questions are sort of about other working with other professionals and being able to own your assessment 
Yeah, I, I, that the, we, it was very interesting writing the book we wrote on collaborative practice. Uh, and again, we wrote it because um, everybody says you, 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 you must work collaboratively. You must share with other professions. But actually, there's no evidence to say uh, that, that that works. You know, all this business about what work centers and the rest of it. If you look at the, the research, there is no research that says that collaborative practice improves outcomes. We do it because we have to. You know, um, there's no use hanging around waiting for the, the evidence because we can't not work with other professionals. So um that's why um but it was interesting that we 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 found some examples some research that said that um team speak is dangerous you you know you get groups of professionals in a room together and they get hold of the wrong end of the stick and they all believe each other and they miss the obvious um so collaborative practice is actually very difficult and there are all sorts of hidden things like who is the leader? If you're in a in a child protection team, uh, a, a care planning team, and you've got a doctor and a psychiatrist and a social worker, uh, you will often find that who is the lead person is is never dealt with. So the GP doesn't turn up or the doctor doesn't turn up because he doesn't like what the social worker was asking him to do or whatever it might be. Um, so collaborative practice is difficult and needs to be worked out, whether it's, uh, I, I'm a big admirer of IROs. I mean, I think the IROs uh, have become very skilled group workers in leading uh, these events. People who chair child protection conferences do need group work skills. I don't think there's enough teaching of group work skills on social work courses these days. And yet a lot of what social workers are doing is essentially using group work skills team leadership skills if you like you're you're leading the team around the family and it's it's difficult what is what it what do we mean by need to know uh you you must share information uh but only if people have a need to know uh who needs to know what how do you decide that's difficult yeah lots of lots of things uh are said which people say oh that that must be easy uh but actually it isn't and deciding how to share information is actually very difficult refreshments have just arrived here you'll be pleased to know <laughs> Thank you. and i think what what needs to be shared as well is always so uh, content it's so contentious as well i remember having a, a child who suffered a lot of trauma and the safeguarding lead wouldn't share the information with the, the class teacher so the class teacher was um correcting behavior inappropriately based on this child's trauma and she and so I was like why haven't you told the teacher what this child's been going through and she was like oh confidentiality and you know and you're just like well you just ask the parents if it's okay to share but I think well, outside of social work I think people get really sort of like you know confidentiality this is our information data protection it can have a real impact on practice mm -hmm. Um, but it, but it's complicated. It, it isn't easy. And uh, so you get people after you've had a serious case review saying, why didn't they? Uh, it, it's difficult. Let's be honest about it. It's difficult. The social work's difficult. That's why it's a skilled profession. Um, I'm a social work student and I find this paper really helpful as it gives a great insight into exactly what's involved in children and family social work. One question that I often hear in university is why the burnout rate is so high in this area. Oh dear, I, I feel deeply saddened about that actually, and it, uh, it must be a huge challenge. Again, back to Bowser, you know, back to Bowser, the profession, the new, uh, the new regulator, um, uh, Ofsted, all of us, uh, because, you know, I know a lot of social workers in their 50s and 60s who stayed in social work for 20, 30 years. Um, why are people, you know, why is that not happening now? I think a lot of it is, is I have to say, it's the cuts, it's the, um, uh, the if, if you're overworked, if your caseload's too high, 
uh, you are far more, more likely to burn out. If you don't get the support, I worry about hot desking, you know, which deprives, you know, much, much of the fun, let's face it, of the job was meeting up with your with your colleagues, um, uh, sharing, yeah, sharing probably uh, not in, uh, in, in uh, just, just letting off steam. Um, now, people talk about having to you know, take 20 minutes to find a parking spot, and then when you get into the office, you can't find a machine and a desk. Yeah. Well, it doesn't surprise me that people leave. Well, why would you go on? Where is the companionship? Where is the work? um support in those circumstances i mean we would i would say just with my basketball hat on that we have got a we have got a survey at the moment on working conditions that we are encouraging members to take part in so it's um bit.ly forward slash sw hyphen working hyphen conditions i mean what i think from my experience and i did not practice for 20 years i would say that i I was quite, I found myself quite susceptible to a culture of being, you know, where you're, you're really busy and you're taking, and you want, and you're, you know, working through your lunch break and you're staying late. And I think, you know, you're maybe not always accepting earlier on that maybe you're out of your depth. I think that, you know, there's, I, th I found like, there, I found, and I'm not saying that this, to critique because I always had very good supervision but I think you get into the point where you feel like you should just you should be able to handle it and you should be able to be hardened to it mm -hmm. and actually I and you know you should be resilient to it and you should toughen up and actually I think um good good social workers shouldn't be toughened up to it and shouldn't be resilient to it like it should still be something um but I would recommend everyone to take the working conditions survey. Um, I, I, do, I do think Basra's surveys are really important. Um, uh, and, you know, you asked me about privatisation. I think Basra should do a survey on, on what is what actually is happening. Um, how many commissioners are actually qualified social workers? Uh, you know, that's such an important role um is it who who's doing it you know so basil has had, got a, a key role in uh well designed surveys i mean we 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 we've had surveys on uh, the fostering uh the, the fostering consultation people do respond and they're incredibly helpful and it's it builds an, it builds an evidence base that we can go back and we can campaign with um yeah which is really really important but i would say it it's very important to look after yourself and i think don't over don't go beyond what you think is reasonable and um, if you're miserable in the job try to live it's difficult if you're tied to a single place geographically um i i would say choose your first choice your first job uh very carefully if you can uh, be mobile, make sure you go to the sort of agency that is going to allow you the sorts of conditions that, that you want. But it's tricky if if you can't, you know, if you, in my area, if you live in Cromer, uh, there's not another local authority job for 50 miles. Yeah, that would be difficult. Um, whereas I suppose in London, I, I lived within five minutes of three different local authorities. So... That's the difference. Being being mobile is key. Is one of our um, feedbacks from our members online. Mm. But I suppose it's easy. But uh, but being lack of being mobile is good. But I suppose also that can contribute to burnout because people find that they are doing most. I of think their people move because the work environment is is impossible um i i i mean i some local authorities manage to have fewer agency workers uh i can see that people might work for an agency just to see 
whether they're getting on with, you know, to try out, if you like, a local authority and then decide to work with them. But I, I, I again, I think agency working is not being good for parents and children. And it, yeah, because it goes back to that relationship, doesn't it? If you're, if you, I mean, especially I'd say in London, you, it is very, it is very, very easy to move local authorities. And if you're having a difficult time or you're finding the work, um, you know, or you you feel sort of unsupported. You, it is very easy two weeks later to get a job relatively close by in a completely different local authority. But then, what families are you leaving behind? And you know, yeah. well, I hope I, I, people people do stay in in shall we know from Ofsted reports with 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 good employers. I wonder if anybody from ADCS has, has tuned in. The Tasman needs to work very closely with ADCS. Uh, you, you, you know, they're they're the ones who set the pattern of, of good practice and good employer. I mean, we're supposed to be moving slightly away from the roles, but what do you think a good employer needs to offer in order to, you know, ensure that we can fulfil our social workers' roles? Where do we start? <laughs> yeah. A big question. I, I, I just couldn't start to, I, I mean, one would start with the obvious things like, uh, hot, you know, look, look at, listen to your social workers and ask them what they want. They want, why do we go to work? We go to work, uh, all of us for uh, companionship, um, uh, to do something rewarding, uh, perhaps a good employer would start with a survey to all their social workers saying what do you like about what you have here and what do you not like about what you have here and what and what is going to make you go um, uh, and it would be hot desking and, and no car parking and um, the, these and no no consultation supervision uh, uh, from somebody you trust and relationship comes in there as well doesn't it actually Re the relationship you have with your casework supervisor i i much prefer the term team leader uh to uh ma team manager because team leaders tells you that they're doing the same job that you are whereas team manager gives a totally different impression of what the priorities are i would also say Oh, I would also say, like, actually asking your social workers how many hours a week they're working, because I know we had some research recently, and an average of social workers is working 11 hours a week over mm. their contracted hours, and that's like that's a day and a half. So I think if your workers are if your workers are routinely staying late and working weekends, then you need to have an organizer you need to have a conversation as an organization the routine the routinely is a key word there will be times when you have to do that um as an academic i regularly work a 60 hour week mm. um but that's because i like what i was doing and i agree with that like often you know if you place a child the other end of the country, you're going to be, that might take 11 hours. But I think if you're routinely having to stay, you know, go home, sign in on the computer to write up your case notes and visit notes yeah. because you don't want to be on the spreadsheet of shame at the next team meeting. I think that's, that's something that I think. Are there spread, spreadsheets of shame? There's, there are spreadsheets of shame. I'm aghast. <laughs> That you get pulled up on if you're if you're if you're if you're out of time scales. Oh dear. I Any more questions? Let's move on. I, I'm appalled. <laughs> I can't believe you've well. I called them the spreadsheet of shame. I don't know if that that's not their official name. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, we've got someone has just said yes. We have them weekly. This, I'm not the only one that called. They're not just. Um, Spreadsheets of shame are a thing. Oh dear. Yeah. Visits and core group minutes. 
that they're done and written up on time. But this is, I, I think there should be more pushback on stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, where is the discretion? I mean, what if your your core group minutes or your core group is late or over time because your parent has uh, just lost a parent or whatever it might be? You know, uh, this this I think is what this your what you're doing about the eighty twenty should should be all about. Not coming out with I don't I don't know what the right proportion is between time to read and research the case, time to work directly with the child, um, time to uh, write your court reports, and, and it will differ from week to week. Um, but but um, what's it all about? Pleasing Ofsted, I guess. Yeah, because I, I once, one of my colleagues used to say to me, can you show me the link between my visit being written up within five working days and that child being safe at home which I always thought was quite interesting I do think that there is some I do think there is something about making sure that all the relevant information that your your records are up to date that's I think that's mm -hmm. important but I think having pouring over spreadsheets for half your team meeting well, let, let, let's talk about the, the sort of recording systems. There are still local authorities who have the most appalling, who are, if you like, in hoc to the IT people, uh, and are told, no, we can't change this, and we can't change that, it'll cost you a fortune if we change that. Um, and a brief recording, um, and 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 case notes i mean you know if if um if just making a a quick having your own note but the police do it don't they have your own notebook uh just as an aid memoir which you then scrap when you've write, written your report but so you at least you um if you have to go on to the next crisis you you've not forgotten what was crucial about the last interview yes I would def I definitely agree. And I think as well, going back to your point, those recordings, those systems are already really expensive to, to, despite all the add-ons. I think it is about it is about making sure that and it goes back to the relationship because actually, fundamentally, the, those records are part of our relationship because the family will access them mm. and read them. Have we got anybody else out there, I'm, I'm, we have, or have we drawn them all up? We've nearly. We've got one last question, and then I think we can finish the that we can finish on this. We have a working group to make constant changes to our recording system. Oh, I'd like to know what local authority that is. That sounds really interesting. Uh, let's hope it's the working group made up of social workers. Yes, and team, uh, team leaders, rather, rather than IT people. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, yes, it's tame side. Yes, it is. It's made up of social workers. Thank you. Well, that's really good. I think some local authorities are taking that on board. Well, I think I think there's a lot of uh, you, you know out out there. Um, uh, again, um, you don't have to be an in innovation. Uh, you know, there are some local authorities who've got innovations money, and there are lots of others who haven't got innovations money, uh, who are, I, th I think it's unfortunate that the money is not being evenly spread so that every local authority can actually employ as many social workers as they need. Whereas at the moment, the money seems to be dished out in some sort of rather peculiar way um, and there is there is excellent practice going on in local authorities who are not partners for practice or uh, getting innovations money um, or, you know there are some interesting ideas coming out of innovations but why does everything have to be an innovation why can't we actually just as Herbert Laming said, do, 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 do the right things well, basically. Um, there is some very good practice built up over the years. And as I say, it is around relationships 
practice. And we, we can add on techniques and tools, but only if we add them on to the essences of the essentials of good practice. Um, I, I worry too much about innovation. Um, some of it is interesting, but it's all got to be built into what we do well already as basic good practice. Yeah. Like science of safety. Science of safety is an interesting approach. Uh, it fits well with basic good practice. It has some tools that you can use or not use. But again, I've heard of uh, social workers uh, you know, forgetting uh, what is essentially good practice because they've got to, they're, they're assessed on whether they've filled in the right tool, <laughs> you know, whether whether all the tools are being completed. Well, uh, you know, if the parent is in a terrible state of distress because they're about to be evicted, then that is not the time to say, well, I've got this tool to fill in. <laughs> um, you, you know, it, it's, um, it, it's how these new ideas fit with uh, best practice and making sure that every local authority can develop um, good practice. No, I, I think that's a really important point. We know what it is. Yeah, I think that's a really important point because we do continue. Sometimes we can, I think it is this, we're pushing to do the next innovative and new ideas when actually what we do, we've been doing well, you know, for... for I, blame, I blame the academics. We all want, we all want to invent a new language um, and, you know, if I think of solution, eco, e, ecologically based, uh, start where the client is, you know, over the years, we've, we've said the same thing and somebody's come along, usually an academic, come out with a, a new piece of jargon for exactly what we've been doing um, and, and get their senior lectureship based on it. So uh, there's an interesting uh it, 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 it's true i don't know why we have to keep inventing new terms for basic good practice uh, but but we do we do add new we, we do also have to add new ideas but they're usually tools or techniques that we can integrate into best practice that we know about anyway that's good um right um i'm just want to talk. Thank you so much, June. Um, I just want to talk. Um, this has been really interesting. We're getting some really good feedback from our members online. Um, we have a number of webinars coming up. We're doing some webinars on our 8020 campaign. Um, and we're also doing one on the Mental Capacity Act in October. So if members, um, if you keep an eye on our events page, all of our webinars will come up. And also, hopefully, um, all of our webinars will eventually be on our website. So if you can't attend a webinar live, so it speaks, you'll be able to download them later. So June, you'll be on the Basel website for- oh, yeah, my, you, you mean all my indiscretions will be on public view? Yours and mine. <laughs> so everyone will be able to, so it will for, forevermore will be on the Basel website. <laughs> There you go. All right. Well, thank oh, you. Nobody sues me. Who, who have I offended? You now think, oh, well, never mind. No, I don't think you've offended anyone, June. We'd have quickly stopped recording if that happened. You would, though. That. <laughs> anyway, June, thank you very much. And um, I look forward to seeing you. Great pleasure. And thank you very much for signing in today and writing the paper. And thanks for everybody. And we, we will, uh, if, if you've got have a look at it uh, I think I think we need to go firm on it within a week because we need to be using it but if, yeah. if, if you want if there's something and I'll certainly look at the rights the thing that somebody pointed out because yeah. we've not made that clear we should have done and my contact details are at the bottom of the paper so if people want to email me they can do my contact and you, and you pass on to me yes. actually yeah that would be the way to do it yeah all right then well thank you very much June let's speak to you soon bye bye